A catastrophic bridge collapse in Baltimore, Maryland has left the MV Dolly ship trapped under massive steel trusses. Today, the unified command has taken the bold step of detonating the precariously positioned truss. How precise were the controlled explosions? Did the operation go as planned? Join us as we dissect the high-stakes demolition, comparing real-life execution to the animated blueprint. When theory meets reality, unexpected challenges arise. Let's see how well the plans held up. In Australia, a demolition team recently demonstrated a textbook example of how not to implode a building. With 100 kg of explosives, they created a spectacular bang, but the 4,000 ton silo in Red Bank didn't collapse as intended. Instead, it got stuck. Drawing lessons from such mishaps, we'll analyze three camera angles of this operation. To refloat the motor vessel Dolly, the section of the steel structure draped over and pinning it down must be removed. Precision cutting is one of the most efficient and safest methods for removing steel under high tension. This highly controlled process enables surgical precision and consists of four key steps. First, the salvage and demolition teams analyze the structure to pinpoint the precise locations for placing charges. Next, they make cuts at these identified locations, and the charges are carefully placed within these cuts and encased with a wrap. Then the charges are detonated, causing the steel to separate and fall into the water, hopefully clearing the vessel if all calculations are correct. Bright and early on Friday morning, May 10th, around 8.15am, a CHC-1000 lifted a massive section of the bridge truss from the starboard side of the dolly and transported it towards Sparrow Point. The water was incredibly choppy due to high winds, making conditions less than ideal for the planned Saturday afternoon blasting of the remaining bridge sections off the dolly's bow. Looking over at the four towering pillars, you can see a duplicate of the bridge pier that once stood next to the dolly, now shattered into pieces. These towering concrete structures give you an idea of the immense scale of the operation. Operation, just like the one currently draped across the starboard side of the dolly's bow, which has also sustained significant damage. But there it goes, off to Sparrow's Point. The mission to blast the bridge truss was rescheduled from Saturday to Sunday, so the crews stayed busy. On Saturday, smaller bridge trusses were removed, with one being carried away by a smaller crane. No downtime was wasted. From Captain Andy's Menorcan Mullet 4K camera, you can see a section of the bridge truss being twisted off just a few hundred yards north of where the dolly is docked. The team has been diligently dismantling this section over the past few days, removing small pieces and carefully placing them on a barge. Look closely at how small the workers appear next to this massive piece of steel. It's probably 30 or 40 feet long. Yesterday, our live stream captured a jaw-dropping scene at the bridge collapse site. Amidst the 2,000-yard safety zone enforced by the United States Coast Guard, a lone kayaker brazenly paddled into restricted waters. The Coast Guard swiftly moved in to address the situation. Imagine the conversation unfolding. What could the kayaker possibly be thinking? Surprisingly, the Coast Guard simply pointed him in the right direction, offered some advice, and sent him on his way. How did he slip past all the security boats? Why wasn't he towed back to shore or arrested? It seemed like an arrestable offense, yet they showed remarkable leniency. Perhaps a team of officers awaited his arrival on shore. Now let's shift our focus to the detonation captured by the Streamtime live cam a couple of miles away. Watch the explosion in slow motion. Notice how far the shrapnel flies, scattering into the distance. The truss detaches and plunges into the water, but not quite as planned. Instead of landing away from the dolly, it ended up closer than intended. Let's scrutinize the footage, slowed down four times for a detailed analysis. Watch carefully the left edge of the truss as it swings downward to the right. It appears it's not detaching at the bottom, on the left-hand side, right where the the mooring line attaches to the bow of the ship. It spins down and down, but it's not sliding off the bow. The water obscures the view momentarily, but you can see the point where it stays almost attached to the roadway. It finally pops off, but it should have sheared off immediately, not at the last minute. This delay caused the truss to somersault off the bow of the dolly, rather than sliding down at an angle into the water. Now it's leaning up against the dolly, which is not what was intended. As the smoke clears, it's clear that the bridge truss somersaulted over the edge of the bow and did not slide off as planned. The Unified Command had stated last week that they intended to blow all the pieces together so they would slide into the water, but as you can see, a big section of the truss is still sitting on top of the dolly. This section is probably manageable, they could likely lift it with a crane and remove it. The section draped over the side should be a piece of cake for them to remove, just like they did on the starboard side last week. Despite the meticulous planning and execution, Conspiracy theories have inevitably emerged. Some claim that the initial bridge collapse was due to a deliberate detonation, but these ideas don't hold water. The noise from such a blast would have been deafening heard for miles around. 
In reality, no one reported hearing any explosions that night, no 911 calls about loud noises from blocks away, only the people directly on site noticed the collapse. These theories often arise in the aftermath of major incidents, but the evidence just doesn't support them. Over the weekend, crews worked relentlessly to wire up the detonation charges. Whether they were interconnected or operated separately with wireless remotes remains uncertain. After the Chesapeake 1000 crane lifted the last enormous chunk of the bridge truss from the starboard bow of the dolly, remnants still jutted out of the water, the teams pressed on, tirelessly adding more charges. They began wiring on Sunday, despite delays caused by bad weather on Friday and Saturday, and additional rain and fog on Sunday. Let's rewind about a month and a half to see how things progressed. On March 29th, just three days after the collapse, the channel was completely blocked. By April 4th, it remained obstructed, but by April 24th, crews had cleared the right side, allowing limited access, which was closed again on April 29th. Comparing March 26th to March 29th, you can see the entire truss. By March 30th, they had aligned the span with barges and begun cutting and removing sections. The team then focused on the starboard side of the dolly, removing small sections of the truss and transporting them bit by bit to Sparrow's Point. By April 6th, significant progress had been made, and by April 15th, the channel was nearly ready for boat traffic. In just two weeks, from March 29th to April 14th, the Chessie had been busy transporting massive pieces to Sparrow's Point. Updated sonar images from April 18th revealed the extensive clearing of debris from the bottom of the channel. Take a look at the wrapped mess around the bridge pier. By April 22nd, crews had cleared it out completely. This was the final major obstruction in the channel. With it removed, the first ship Bolson 94 navigated through, followed by the Carmen, marking a significant milestone in the rapid progress made. The channel was now open, signaling a triumphant step forward in the restoration efforts. From the initial chaos to the meticulous planning and hard work, every detail mattered. But this triumph is bittersweet. As we marvel at the efficiency and skill demonstrated in the cleanup, we must also pause to remember those who lost their lives during the initial collapse. The workers who died are more than just statistics. They were family members, friends, and colleagues. Their dedication and bravery in the face of danger are a solemn reminder of the human cost associated with such massive undertakings. They worked tirelessly, often in harsh conditions, to ensure the safety and functionality of infrastructure that many of us take for granted. In addition to the human sacrifice, the logistical challenges of this operation were immense. Coordinating such a complex demolition required seamless collaboration between multiple agencies from the Coast Guard to engineering firms, each team brought its expertise, working together to execute a plan that balanced precision with safety. The meticulous documentation of this process, captured in stunning detail by various cameras and live streams, provides an invaluable record for future reference. These images and videos will serve as educational tools, helping engineers and planners to refine their approaches to similar challenges in the future. They also stand as a testament to the collaborative spirit and technical prowess that made this operation a success. If maritime stories and disaster recoveries intrigue you, stay tuned. We explore some of the most captivating maritime tales and engineering feats. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more thrilling content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.